everybody. everybody. Welcome to another episode of Live with Trenny and C. Yep. And we got Forty Creek Chris with us today. Yes. Um, I think that was the name he was born with. It, it yeah, I, like first name Forty Creek. <laughs> Anyway, um, so thank you guys for joining us. We have a really, it's a really exciting one for us today. Um, we have a lot to cover today. We actually. do actually have a lot to do. So Chris sent, her. Chris sent us generously, he sent us eight bottles to work through. That's amazing. Um, six different samples went to Dram Club people. <laughs> and then there's two bottles to give away tonight. Oh. And then we were also hoping to do a little Drinko Plinko and make some cocktails. Um, Excellent. So it's a big night tonight. Um, so, Chris, do you want to start, kick us off by just introducing yourself and tell us uh, who you are and what you do? Sure. Why not? Uh, first of all, guys, thanks. This is going to be fun. Uh, oh, my name's Chris Thompson. Uh, I am the North American brand ambassador for Forty Creek. Uh and I have the greatest job in the world. I get to kind of travel around the country, uh, actually all over North America, although not right now, um, and uh, kind of introduce people to our great whiskeys. Um, I've been in this role for the better part of uh, six years now. Uh, when I joined the company, um, my, ne my next door neighbor actually kind of turned me on to Forty Creek. Um, I had kind of, you know, lost interest in Canadian whiskey many years ago, and he introduced me to Forty Creek in his basement. And then, literally, I found out they make it like 15 minutes down the road from our house. So I went and I was pounding on the door, going, "Hey, uh, you know what? I want to, I want to be kind of part of this thing." And back then, we weren't even called Forty Creek yet; we were still called Kitling Ridge Wines. And I said, "With this whiskey thing you guys are doing, like." I totally dig this. This is awesome. So uh, I basically took a job as uh, like a little, you know, tasting room, uh, tasting room junkie in uh, in our little visitor center or brand house as we're calling it now. And um, just started doing samplings. And for the most part, it was kind of, you know, the wine side was still kind of the name on the front door, but the, the whiskey side was definitely building. And uh, yeah, I've kind of lived and breathed this brand sort of intimately for, you know, the better part of 10 years now and I you know really proud to say I get to work quite a bit with John Hall and our master Bill Ashburn so uh, you know I've been uh, kind of entrenched in this thing for uh, for a long time it's been great and so John Hall was the John K Hall was the founder right and uh, yeah. and so he's moved on or retired or how's that play out yeah so um, yeah I mean our history is kind of really entrenched around two guys and you know one is the name you know which is John Hall Hall. And the other one is the name that you don't know, but you probably should. And that's our master blender, Bill Ashburn. And, um, you know, both had had pretty, uh, pretty significant experience uh, and uh, had really made a name for themselves in the wine industry first. Both of them were wine guys, essentially. Uh, and both left the wine industry to kind of try their hand at making spirits. And, uh, you know, um, I always like to say this. I mean, you know, Bill Ashburn made us taste good but John Hall made us famous. So uh, right. Bill Ashton actually was working at the little distillery in Grimsby before John Hall even got there. And then when the two of them kind of joined forces, uh, they really wanted to, you know, change the way that people thought about Canadian whiskey. So it was about pushing innovation and premiumizing the category and, and, and you know, getting a little crazy. I mean, the, the industry had been stagnant for, I mean, literally like four decades almost. Yeah. Well, I remember that was one of the the big kind of selling points, or well, the way that it was, it was marketed a number of years ago. The idea that the winemaker was making whiskey and kind of made it in a unique, different way of looked at blending things a little bit differently than the I don't want to say average, you know, traditional blender, but the traditional, I guess. And it, I, I really that's something that stuck with me. It was actually one of the first bottles of whiskey I ever bought myself because I saw a little video of John Hall making the whiskey in the style of how you would blend a wine or whatever. And I remember thinking like, that was, that was really cool. Unique. I mean, it, and the fun thing is, is that, I mean, when you think about Canadian whiskey sort of in the early days of 40 Creek, I mean, nobody really talked about, you know, <laughs> the art of blended wine or, or sorry, the art of blended whiskey. And, yeah. you know, for a long time, it's really kind of been at the forefront of, 
of what made Canadian whiskey really great. It was the fact that we could take all of these different grains and, you know, different styles of barrels and, and you know, unique uh, wood treatments and aging different times and kind of weaving all of that together. I mean, we never talked about that as an industry before. So, you know, I love is that, you know, we kind of cracked open the book a little bit and, uh, and, and started talking pretty openly about kind of the art of the blend. And, and, uh, and that's really what makes Canadian whiskey spectacular is the ability to weave all of these really, really cool, unique flavors and go and tweak them in different ways and, and come up with something pretty unique. Yeah, very cool. Absolutely. Um, let's say hello to a few people. We've got uh, a bunch of people online. And if you're online, we can only say hello if you leave a comment first. As you know, we, we can see the numbers of people, but we can only see your name once you leave a comment. So AS, which is Amir, welcome. Uh, our boy Rarebird101, who actually has his own book about wild turkey. You should check that out. Um, awesome. Leave a comment. Yeah, Rare Bird, leave a comment with the link of where people can get your book uh, in one of the comments. Uh, our boy Tim Dietrich, uh, Ben Demon Hunter is here, Skippy Van Pob is here, Joshua Asplin, Moose76, um, John Harden, Christine Daisy, Matt Floyd, uh, Milton <coughs> Montreal, um, <laughs> and uh, so on and so <laughs> forth. Welcome, everybody. Happy to have uh, patrons and beyond uh, here today. Uh, in case you missed the first little bit, we are uh, with Forty Creek Chris, and we we actually need to get down to business if we want to <laughs> get through some of these bottles tonight. But I can't imagine we're going to do all eight. But um, I want Chris. What do you think we should start with? With some of the ones that uh, you sent us here, we are personally. Yeah, I mean, you know what? I always like to start with. I always like to kind of start with our OG, uh, our OG whiskey barrel select. I mean, this is the one that kind of built the bus for the company. It's, uh, it's, you know, it's been around for 20 years now. So happy 20th anniversary. Um, this was kind of like Canada's first sort of craft whiskey. I mean, before craft was even craft, uh, right. this is kind of what really set Canadian whiskey on a new path. Uh, and brought in this whole new era of, you know, premiumization, and it was big and bold and spicy, and uh, it had a lot of stuff going on. So, it actually, it's pretty funny. I um, so I was I was preparing for you guys today. I'm going through and I'm pulling out all my bottles that we're going to taste through today, and I didn't have a bottle of Barrel Select, so I actually had to call my neighbor and go, "Hey, can I borrow a bottle because I'm doing this thing with Trinity and Eat Night." And I didn't have a bottle of, you know, uh, I mean, obviously my liquor cabinet's like loaded with copper pot and, and to the special reserves and stuff, but barrel selects the one that I kind of forgot about. So I got, I got the, the old, uh, the old original label when, when they oh, dropped it off. Cool. So. We probably, yeah. we might have one of those too. We probably have an OG one of these somewhere too. I'll look over in the shelf and see if we got one too, but um, you should say hi but, to some of the new people. That but it's, it. it's, it's uh, kind of true. You go back to these ones the OG and you realize why you continue buying them and why you like them in the first place. There's nothing, nothing wrong with this one. Is there any, yeah. is there any difference? Oh yeah. This is, this, we got an OG as well. Yeah. You got an OG too. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> okay. We got a couple more people to say hello here to here. I don't know if we said hello to Joe Dawson, Richie uh, no. Z. Yeah. Uh, Indy in Ingot, Indy Ingot, and uh, those are just a couple of new ones. Is saying that, hello. Is that a howdy ho? Is that what? <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> howdy ho, call, Indy. Just calls a ho. Um. Hmm. Anyways. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay. So back to okay, So yeah. back to uh, the barrel select. What do you tell us a little bit about this one? This one's probably, I'm guessing, the most widely available for everyone. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, this is the one that you can go to. You know, you can go across Canada. You can find it pretty much everywhere. Uh, this is the one that kind of launched us uh, in the U.S. as well. Um, funny little story. This this whiskey actually caught on first uh, in the U.S. Uh, we were actually way more popular in the southern U.S. in our early days, probably the first couple years, uh, than we ever were in Canada. And then. Finally, Canada caught on, and that's pretty typical of all of our, you know, a lot of our national treasures. It's, uh, yeah. 
takes our friends down in the south to uh, to kind of turn us on to some of the good stuff that's in our own backyard. But uh, oh, for sure. it quickly, um, quickly caught here in Canada, and uh, it's it's now depending on where you are in the country, it's either the number four or the, uh, or the number five whiskey uh, in yeah. pretty much every province. Cool. Um, yeah. So nice, big, sweet nose oh, to this. Yeah. A lot of like li- spices and. But like, coffees and yeah it's kind of creamy too yeah like you can i always say you can almost smell the viscosity of 40 creek like yeah. it, it's it's nice and syrupy and it I, that's smells what I like it, it smells like there's a richness to it yeah you know um barrel select yeah i love that descriptor rich is kind of really what we were going for um we wanted our whiskeys to be full flavored have a beautiful mouth feel um yeah. you know kind of nose a little bit bolder but still had that uh you know still had that hallmark canadian sweetness and uh whenever i go to uh you know some of these uh, award shows or competitions or whatever and i actually start chewing the fat with some of the judges afterwards you know when they're going in and doing their blind taste test they could tell like immediately on the nose they're like oh yeah yeah i know that's 40 creek like i there's no doubt about it that's the house, the house style. But one thing that we need to talk about, that we need to get out of the way right right away, are the multiple accusations <laughs> that has come up on every video, time and time again, that there is some source to your viscosity. Are you aware of an additive of any kind that you've you, you you've been adding to the product to make it? feel so lubricated and nice. <laughs> I mean, you know, I've been, uh, I've been in and out of that plant for, you know, the better part of 10 years now. Uh, uh, you know, I've worked side by side with John Hall. I've been in the lab with Bill Ashburn. I've, you know, been around when these guys are, are doing the final blends for everything. And, you know, listen, unless I'm going for a bathroom break and kind of miss something, uh, no. There is no glycol in here to add to the viscosity of any of our liquids. So that, and that is the word that, that people keep bringing up. They keep saying, uh, glycol, something yeah. that, um, I think one of the ones I saw that was like an ex employee from 40 <laughs> Creek has confirmed that this is that. And it's like, well, okay, let's consider, let's say if there was an ex employee who is saying things, you always wonder about the motives of an ex employee of some yeah, yeah. <laughs> so it's like i'm not sure that's the most credible source that you can come up with but um yeah so unless that's part of the the 111 rule um <laughs> yeah 111th is glycol <laughs> i mean it, it's it's uh listen i mean do we dabble with the you know with the one one eleventh? absolutely mm-hmm. um you know us and you know uh, what i love is you know uh you know unit we started 111 talking. right John Livermore is talking. Oh yeah, I mean that's that's a classic example right there of how to really do the one eleventh rule, mm-hmm. yeah. uh, the nine nine percent, and do it you know really well. We're always really respectful of anything that we add to the liquid. You know, no neutral grain spirits, no citrus wine, like none of that other kind of stuff. If we're gonna add something, it's gonna be good. Uh, yeah, that's quality. Quality. Been, first. always been right. mantra. Yeah. Uh, my fa- my favorite. Oh, electric bananas <laughs> on with us right now. By the way, my favorite. Um, uh, what's that called? The uh, handle. It's handle. YouTube handle. Yeah, electric that's a banana. Good one. Electric <laughs> banana. And uh, electric banana, being male or female, I'm not 100 sure, but um, it says e- evening dudes. Cool to see some 40 Creek here. I've enjoyed many bottles of Barrel Select and Copper Pot over the years. So we have some definite fans joining us tonight, which is awesome to see. Cool. Okay. Okay, so uh, I poured a bit of a big dram, but we can crush, crush it a bit. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Are you are you drinking anything right now? Are you drinking a Okay, perfect. I'm okay, drinking well, a lot. Listen, we're move on. Uh, Maybe what you say is next? Copper I'm, pot? I'm not going to let a little touch of food poisoning get in the way of enjoying a good dram or two. Mm, no. no. It will cure it, I hear. Yeah, yeah it might. Okay, here we go. Mm. Okay, and we put away our, a glass for a new yep. glass as well. We got fresh glassware here. That's how prepared we are tonight. Look at that! I didn't realize we had two of these bad boys. That's That's awesome. Okay, so um, yeah, we guys probably had to clean out the kitchen with all the bottles that I gave you. (laughs) Well, okay. Can I tell you that? Sit. Okay, so we, my wife and I, used to be you know regular Bailey's drinkers, 
Okay. And coffee. Bailey's and coffee. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Bailey's and coffee. And um, we've been camping a lot lately. And I've, I don't want to indicate that I have some kind of problem, but maybe I do. I think I've probably gone through like 10 of these things, which we're not going to taste next, but I've gone through like 10 of these 40 Creek creams in the last, like probably two months that we've been. Uh, no, okay. Well, when were these bottles sent? Because it's been since then and you've had a lot of it. Yeah. It's been about two months, but I mean, but purely because though that you've decided decidedly it's better than Bailey's Irish cream. I have, because I think it's just a titch less sweet, which actually works perfectly. And I've actually, when we go camping, we we go up and we share it with the whole family and stuff. So it's like everybody, now my whole family, my extended family is buying 40 Creek cream as well. So, um, and I'm not like doing some kind of plug here. I don't work for 40 Creek cream, if that's even a business, <laughs> but I freaking love it. So uh, anyway, we're giving one of these away tonight to somebody. So um, that's going to be fun. You can't be on that list, by the way. You can't win. You can't <laughs> oh, win. I won. <laughs> stuff in the ballot box. Yeah. yeah. Um, now that stuff is, uh, and, and this is from a guy who like, you know, like I'm not a big flavored whiskey guy or uh, like cream liqueur guy in any way, shape or form, but that stuff is literally liquid crack cocaine. That's oh, amazing. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. amazing. I, I yeah. do have a problem. I admit it. Um, <laughs> what do you want to, what do you want to get into next? Should we do copper pot next? Yeah, let's do copper pot. All right. This is okay. Here we go. Copper Pot was, we did a number of years ago when we kind of first did these reviews, we did them back to back of the Barrel Select and then the Copper Pot. And we did a double review in the trailer at Shawnigan Lake. And um, we, this has just become, you know how sometimes you open a whiskey and you, you like it and you enjoy it, but there's just so much out there to try. And so you move on and you keep moving on. You experiment. But the thing is, is I come back to Copper Pot at least three or four times a year, you know, like I'll definitely buy bottles of this over and over again. And there's something also like it, maybe it's like subconscious, but we have, for some reason, we have always associated 40 Creek with our, with nature. Yeah. Like we, every review we've ever done of 40 Creek, the most recent ones, when you sent us the bottles, we yeah. cut, did those ones on purpose. We did them outside, but everything that we had ever done with for 40 Creek videos before that, had also always been outside. We did them at the river. We did it at the lake. We did them oh, yeah. at on the quad. Yeah. We did like all of these different reviews. And then we we're like, oh, let's do a whole series. Like when you said all of these, we did outdoors. Yeah, we reviewed yeah. every yeah. single one of these ones outdoors. And um, three of the videos went up on our YouTube channel. One of them went to patrons only. We did the the double. Double barrel, which actually we should get in. Well, we're yeah, gonna get into everything. We're going to get into all of it. Um, it turns out we're going to get into all of it. <laughs> so anyway, like, I don't know. There's some weird subconscious um, natural outdoor feel to 40 Creek for us. That's our, that's our like association. Which is, which is good. It gets us out in nature once <laughs> yeah. in a while. <laughs> get you out of the garage. Yeah, exactly. Uh, studio. <laughs> studio. Yeah, you studio. Yeah, you mean studio. <laughs> Um, well, I, 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 40 Creek copper pot. Yeah. I, I mean, I, I, a, I love that you guys associate 40 Creek with kind of like the great outdoors and Canadiana and, uh, yeah. uh, you know, obviously we're really proud of, of, of our, you know, Canadian heritage and our roots and, and we've been banging the gong for Canadian whiskey for a long time. And I think, you know, certainly John Hall was one of those guys that really, um, you know, the guy was a one man road show that was, you know, not only not only talking about 40 Creek, but certainly talking about how great Canadian whiskey can be. And uh, that kind of, you know, really helped the category. I mean, we're in this new renaissance of uh, of of Canadian whiskey. And I think some of the best whiskeys that have ever come out in the history of Canadian whiskey. I mean, man, they've happened in probably the last five, six years. Yeah, uh, it's spectacular. So uh, can I just interrupt you a bit? Like, I, I want to say, like, one of the things we've really realized, like, not just being Canadian, but which helps, but promoting these whiskeys and realizing how much diversity and how beautiful they all are. Like, mm, there's yeah. so many good Canadian whiskeys and where when we first started getting into them, it's like, 
you don't know until you know. And I think that's why we're really trying to promote it because and now this know. is like the, could be the big wave of whiskey in the future. I can, think. Can I, um, do it before we lose track here. I want to throw a couple of, can we do some rapid fire questions to you, Chris? Yeah. Fire away. Yeah. Where did you get the name 40 Creek? Mm. Question one. Question. Yep. Uh, so where we are in Grimsby, Ontario, there actually is a 40 mile Creek. Uh, it runs uh, through a break in the Niagara escarpment runs right through what is now the heart of downtown Grimsby and dumps into Lake Ontario. Uh, when that area was first settled, they used to call that area the 40 because that Creek is roughly 40 miles from Niagara Falls. Got so it's a real geographic place. Okay. Let's move on to the next question, which was, uh, Never seen a copper pot bottle. Do they make it past the border? Is copper pot in the States? Yep. Uh, copper pot is indeed in the States. Um, it depends where you are. You can get it in, um, uh, Georgia's got it. Missouri's got it. Texas has got it. Uh, some places in upstate New York have it. Uh, after that, it's a little harder to find. Okay. And by the way, just people watching right now, they should follow you on Instagram at 40 Creek Chris. Yeah. Good, good and call. then if they want to get in touch, then it's maybe easier. Perfect. And that was a question yep. from Moose 76. And the first question uh, came in from John Harden. And another question from Rarebird 101. Uh, what's the gateway 40 Creek expression for bourbon drinkers? I want to say copper pot, but um, up to uh, you guys. So yeah, I mean, for me, I think it's double barrel. Uh, it's probably well, our most bourbon-like. Um, mm -hmm. It's uh, high corn content, uh, a little bit of a heavier mouthfeel, um, not as spicy, kind of resembles very much sort of the, you know, that sweeter style of bourbon. Um, that That's kind of, to me, the gateway, the gateway 40 Creek into the bourbon world. Is that one in the States? Uh, that one is in the States. That's in many parts of the U.S. Yeah, you can find wow. Earl Select and Double Barrel uh, in probably 40, 42 states in the U.S. Okay, great news. Okay. Uh, I've seen it here in Texas. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, Food Quig is here. He's dropping oh, in hey, between Food calls. Quig. What's up, Quig? Um, only, uh, Will, For uh, Will 40 Creek sell whiskey online in Ontario? Mm -hmm. Uh, yes, we actually, it's, uh, it's been in the works for a long time. Uh, and we did do it for a very short time. And then, uh, the system that we use on the back end crashed and it was a total nightmare. So we're rebuilding the back end. Uh, it's coming. It's going to happen soon. Mm -hmm. So, and that is what through like the distillery site. Is yep. That, okay, cool. Okay. So that's good. We've, we rattled off a few questions. We're still drinking barrels. <laughs> Or a copper pot, I should so say. So copper pot, oh. we haven't really talked about too much. Tell us a little bit of the difference between the barrel for people who haven't tried it, because there yeah. is a significant difference in flavor and profile. Uh, yeah, there really is. And this this is my favorite. I mean, I, I, I'll go on record any day, period. This this whiskey is my jam. Yeah. Um, Same. <laughs> uh, this does a few things. Uh, the blend is actually really similar to Barrel Select, um, but there's a couple of significant differences. A, uh, higher ABV, so 43% alcohol versus 40. Um, and this sees about 20% of its aging in new oak uh, versus, you know, only about 10% in new oak in barrel select. So that higher percentage of new oak that the whiskeys are aged in kind of makes it a, a, a bolder, spicier style of expression. I really find that kind of the rye really shines through on this. There's that big kind of dark orange sure. citrus note on it. Um, and even though the blend is, is very, very similar to barrel select, uh, I just find that the rye really pops an awful lot more in copper pot. And, and with the extra 3%, like it all seems to work really well together. And, um, this has always made our lists of best bang for your buck. Totally. Also, oh, yeah. it's really reasonably priced. Well, and that's exactly why. Yeah. 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 The price is so good but for I've, what you're getting. I've also found there's something about this one and it's, I don't know if it's because it's a Canadian whiskey that it just automatically makes me have these uh, ideas of just typicalness of maple syrup. Yeah. I get a maple kind of a vibe from it. Or there's, there's I think <laughs> maybe the thing is, is it's just more 
young oak influence. This was the one that I think that we said that was the pralines and cream where we got into the debate of what a praline was. <laughs> and we're like, wait, what, what the fuck is a praline? And somebody <laughs> responded, and a praline was like a, I think it was like a candied nut of some kind. Yeah, well, I feel like that's what's like- But we weren't cream. sure what a praline was. Well, like, praline is it a is, raisin or well, like- what? Pralines were the nuts in the yeah, ice cream <laughs> and they're like candy coated kind of. Anyway. We couldn't remember at the time. Anyway. Point, point is, there's no point. <laughs> um, <laughs> Rare Bird uh, says, I just followed you on Instagram. Chris, going to shoot you a DM. So look out for that, Chris. Awesome. I just saw him pop up there. Yep. Perfect. Cool. Um, so we have a good amount of people that are watching now. We've uh, we've tried the, the barrel select, and we're finishing up on the copper pot, and... Uh, uh, we'll move on to another dram here pretty quick. What's next in the lineup? So, well, I just want to say for people who have kind of maybe just started joining us, there's a couple of things we're doing tonight. Um, we are giving away two bottles of uh, 40 Creek. We're going to give away the spiked honey and the cream, which C, crack, the crack. C has gone on record saying it is, okay, well, it's actually your words, but crack cocaine. I said I have an addiction, <laughs> and then you said it was crack cocaine, so it all makes sense now. Which makes sense, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Like, and I'm, I'm regretting I said that already. <laughs> so we're going to be giving away bottles, and then we're also going to be doing, uh, we're going to be hooking up the Drinko Plinko machine and uh, doing a 40 Creek cocktail, whatever the coin chooses. Basically. You know what scares me is the idea of like Skynet and te technology <laughs> taking over. And when I think about that, I think about the Drinko Plinko machine just making everyone their drinks. Like you will no oh, longer yeah. you will no longer choose your drinks. Like Drinko Plinko will choose them for you. But hey, as long as they're using Trini and C challenge coins. Oh, a plug! Which you, oh, that's the wrong one. Oh, hold on. Which you can get on a Patreon or what do you call it? I don't know. Anyways, this is what we drop the machine. He doesn't even know how to sell his own coins. Like. And hey, I'm, I've, I'm been not practicing. Gonna... I've been practicing. Okay. You go to PayPal. Yeah. In the recipient, you put trainingc at gmail.com. Yeah. And then if you want a coin. How much money are they? They are $20 a coin. Yeah. And what do they have to do? And all you have to do is send your your address. Yeah. And the coin number that you want. Yeah. Okay. You did it. It's you did good. it. Dude. I just don't do it as nice. seamlessly as you do. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, Chris, we will send you your challenge coin, which also doubles as a, a whiskey hat. Uh, and then to Perfect. keep your, to keep your vapors from oh well, no well your vapors are escaping but there we go. <laughs> once you get it on there you know you're uh and and plus it's it's an insanely valuable collectible they've, they've done nothing but appreciate over time like oh, I mean yeah 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 the the batch one trendy and C coins are you pretty much can't find them online they're very very but uh like little disclaimer. They're not actually coins, and you can't actually trade them for goods and services. <laughs> These coins have no value. Um, sorry. Okay. Nobody needs to know that. Okay, um, okay moving right. on. Oh, it's getting hot in here. <laughs> By the way, is it uh, hot in uh, Ontario there right now? Oh, my God. It's stinking hot. Uh, yeah. Finally, finally today had a, had a day that was less than, uh, you know, like mid-30s. It was ridiculous. Okay. Today Today was our hottest day of the year at 33. Yeah. 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 No, it's been uh, it's been smoking. I've been one big, hot, sweaty, gross mess for the last three weeks. Nice. Yeah, us, that's us that's basically yeah. me in winter yeah. anyways. So <laughs> <laughs> Year round, he's a sweaty mess. Yeah. Um, okay. Okay, moving on from uh, – so that's good info we learned about the copper pot, the uh, – and, I mean, copper pot's kind of our – you know, one of, the, one of the reasons behind it as well is we want to kind of make something that would really stand up in a cocktail as well. Yeah. So uh, well, it's a great cocktail, makes ridiculously good Caesars. Copper pot Caesars will change your life forever. Well, mm. well, well, and that's like the maple Caesar, right? Like if you think about like the, the maple rim Caesar, like oh, this yeah. is a little bit more on that like. You could have a bacon. Uh, the bacon Caesar, yeah, yeah, with the maple rim. And so, oh, yeah. Okay, let's, let's move on. Okay. We're, we're wasting Chris's time Sorry. here. <laughs> it's like midnight for you. We're just getting started here, but. Uh, it's, it's literally midnight right now for you, is it not? It is, uh, yeah, it is. Yep. Okay. What do you want to drink now? Do, uh, do you, let's do double barrel. Double, double barrel. barrel. Okay. okay. Cool. You pour. I'm going to rinse out these glasses so that we never Here's we don't run out. More. Yeah. <laughs> you, you, okay. So I'm going to pour this one. Um, 
Why don't you go ahead and tell the people all the beautiful things about this whiskey, which, by the way, this is a beautiful tell whiskey. The uh, so Double Barrel is kind of our uh, – it's our biggest uh, kind of fullest – fullest flavor expression um treads on a bit of bourbon territory uh the name comes from the fact that we actually age the whiskeys twice so uh the initial whiskey stocks are aged for four years uh then those whiskeys are aged for a secondary period and first fill bourbon barrels from four roses maker's mark and heaven hill and that's oh, wow. where a lot of kind of awesome. big bourbon notes kind of show up really show up in uh, yeah. That secondary aging can vary. It's anywhere between six months to up to two years. And the whiskey's kind of ready when it's ready. Yeah, right. So there's no like steadfast, like on this date, it's exactly two years and we're taking it out of the barrel. Nope. Yeah, it's when it's ready. That makes sense. So C is just showing up again. I'm going to say that again. So these are uh, aged and ex bourbon barrels mm -hmm. for the second portion okay. in uh, Maker's Mark, Heaven Hill, and what did you say, sorry? Four Roses. Four Roses, yeah. Oh, that's a real nice bourbon lineup right and, there. And you know what? Like, I think they're asking about the uh, <clears throat> where you would go as a bourbon drinker, and I could see this being up there as well. Well, it makes a lot Because, like, the of nose it. has a little bit of a floral kind of aspect to it, which which is nice. So, yeah. sorry, what, um, you may have already explained this. What puts the double in double barrel? Yeah, so it's the fact that the whiskey's aged twice. So the first okay. year is uh, – the first four – years is done in you know what we like to call vintage bourbon barrels so you know bourbon barrels that have been used typically two three times uh so it's a nice sort of neutral you know neutral palette to kind of build on and where a bunch of those bigger bourbony style notes kind of show up is in that secondary aging okay. i love the feel on this it's just it's got some beautiful weight and structure to it honestly right now personally right this second i'm getting my favorite experience with this one and so is this is this rye and corn or just corn or what's in uh every 40 creek expression is corn barley and rye oh corn, and, and is it, is it a, a little smidgen of rye tiny bit of barley okay so mainly a corn yeah, yeah. corn barley and rye okay great i i really like the nose on this one it's so beautiful I, I think the um when we did the neck pour on this one it was a little bit mild right mm -hmm. i think that was what happened was it, like when we first did our it was also outdoor and windy it was outdoor <laughs> and windy and we were using plastic cups but i mean that should be fine right yeah. um and we were like oh this is a little bit a little bit of a soft nose but i mean right now in okay it's a bit muggy in here but that's literally like the perfect environment for like yeah. smelling these whiskeys like everything's coming out right now like so nicely i'm really liking this one a lot right now Mm. Okay, I'm going to get to the flavor well, here. You know what's funny is that my brother-in-law brought this up camping like the week after we tried it. And when I tried it with him, I was like, well, this is better than I remember it. Mm -hmm. You know, like it just kind of keeps getting better. And actually, <laughs> yeah. you know, I tasted it. And it's got a little bit of like a, like an effervescent sizzle. Mm. With like almost like. It does have a tingle to it. I got to say like. Maybe this is wrong. I guess no one's wrong, but it has like a wine characteristic to it to me. A little bit yeah, like I can see that for sure. And and I think that actually shows up in probably all of our whiskeys. There's uh, you know, there's when you kind of, you know, dig and I don't think you have to dig that deep into it. There's definitely you can tell there's a little wine influence mm -hmm. in, in all of our whiskeys. There's uh um it, it's just there. There's kind of like that. And, and, you know, part of that sweetness is sort of that, you know, that, that red wine Cabernet ish kind of, kind of sweetness to it. For sure. But uh, I'm, I'm also finding now today, right now, exactly why you're saying that it's like a bourbon gateway. Like it's, it's feeling that way more so right now than it has previously to me. And I think it's because I'm in like, I'm actually in the right drinking environment. Like yeah. again, so the curse of drinking something out in nature all the time is that there's a lot of, there is a lot of like wind and you know, you, you, you well, and these smells like, and yeah, the there's other things, you know? influences. Like right now we're in a very controlled environment and it's like the warmth is like drawing out. Yeah. Everything yeah, right now. Like rises a little bit. Getting a really good um, experience right now. One thing that's interesting is that 
we do have several Dram Club members online right now. And I know we still have um, a bunch of other 40 Creeks to come up. You know, we're halfway through the lineup, but I still would like, while we have a bunch of you online in case you have to drop off, um, I'd like to know your favorite 40 Creek that we sent to you from the samples. So I know AS is on and Christine is on. And I think um, uh, a few other people are on too from Dram Club. So if you actually got, oh, Matt Floyd is there. He said, love the double barrel. Um, but do you love it like the best love it or where in the lineup is it? So, oh, Quinn Palmer's on too. So, uh, so I want to hear from the Dram Clubbers. Yeah, Dram sure. Clubbers, what is your favorite one that we sent you from the samples? Please let us know. And also keep sending uh, questions for Chris because this is it's kind of fun to be able to interact this way. Yeah, yeah. Um, I got a, I have a question for you. Um, the majority of Forty Creek whiskey <laughs> is bottled at forty percent. Is there a reason behind that besides that it works? I guess. Yeah. Uh, well, so for us, and we get asked all the time, uh, you know, when are you going to do a cask strength? You know, why don't you do anything, you know, overproof? We, we've, we've been asked that a lot uh, for a long time. And, it, you know, the idea behind 40 Creek is that we wanted to build something that was, um, frankly, highly drinkable. Uh, and I know that sounds kind of stupid, but... No, no, no it doesn't. Yeah. Drinkability, drinkability, yeah. crushability. We didn't want to lose the approachability of it. And and listen, I love some overproof stuff as well. Uh, as a matter of fact, I was just tearing into a bottle of uh, of uh, Russell's Reserve single barrel um, mm -hmm. uh, yesterday with a friend of mine. And I mean, it's hot. Yeah. So for for you know for those, that style of whiskey, you're gonna have one, maybe two, and you're gonna add some water. But, you know, we want people to be able to sit back and be able to enjoy a few 40 Creeks without completely burning your palate out. So yeah. it was kind of, you know, uh, just that high level of drinkability in mind. Um, you know, the only one that we've ever done that's kind of overproof is a, a Copper Pot and some of our some of our limited editions. Um, or we wanted a little bit more of a statement style. But uh, but generally, as a rule, 40 40 percent is kind of where we like it. Um, it keeps the whiskeys nice and smooth and not particularly overpowering, and all the flavors really work in harmony at that uh, at that alcohol point. So, can we talk a little bit of a Forty Creek controversy that happened? Sure. Are you ready for this? <laughs> um, Bring it. So, a couple years ago. You guys won the Canadian Whiskey of the Year, and then nobody got to drink it because you never put it out. What the what was that about? We also won so, the trend of the yeah, <laughs> awards of the year that year too. So, yeah. but no one knows. Yeah. Yeah. It was, uh, yeah. I mean, that whole thing was a little bit of a, a little bit of a debacle. Um, and Part of it was our fault and, you know, we'll all lay a small percentage of the blame on uh, our friends at the Liquor Control Board of Ontario as well. Um, so we kind of had it in the pipeline to be released at a certain time uh, via lottery at the LCBO. Mm. And um, there was some lab testing issues that uh, were being a little problematic. Uh, and they kept asking us for, you know, new sample bottles, uh, to, uh, to, to retest with. And we're like, we only made 106 bottles of this. We're not giving you any more. Right. So you can go and retest this thing. Um, and this was a 22 year old rye, correct? Pardon me? It was a 22 year old rye, correct? Yeah. There are 20. It was the only, uh, only single grain age statement whiskey that we've ever done. This was kind of, uh, this was Bill Ashburn's statement whiskey. I mean, he's he's been our master blender uh, since day one and um, has been a huge influence uh, on, on the whole, all of the 40 Creek expressions over the last 20 years and, and is responsible for, for some of the most spectacular whiskeys we've ever done, period. And that was kind of his, that's been his little pet project 
before we were even 40 Creek. So he literally hauled in the bags of grain and, uh, and, you know, and, uh, did all the, all the distillation himself in the pot still and literally hand bottled every bottle uh, wow. of that. whiskey. And, um, so for him, that's kind of his, you know, it was for me, it was his, kind of his big coming out party. He goes, Hey guys, I mean, I don't know. You, you, nobody knows anything about me, but I've been here a long time. And by the way, boom, I'm the, I'm the best. Boom. Yeah. Um, and, <laughs> Can so, we and then it wins and then it blows judges away the Canadian whiskey awards. And then we can't get it out. Uh, so how, how come more isn't being made? Uh, well, years ago. Yeah. We only <laughs> we're 22 years old, but yeah. so, I mean, we're a young distillery. We typically don't have a lot of uh, old age. I mean, you know, we're not like, uh, you know, Canadian club or JP wise. I mean, these guys have been around for a long time. Yeah. They have the ability to squirrel away liquid uh, and forget about it for years. And uh, we just don't have that liberty as a 20 year old company. So, um, you know, that's been making whiskey since 1992. Um, so can we, so uh, can we DM you on the side to get a sample of that one? Or is that, <laughs> is that, a, is that a, in a vault somewhere? Or is that in the so whiskey museum? I, honest story. Um, so even uh, when we released the 22 year old rye, it was so limited that I didn't get one. <laughs> Burn. So I'm like, hold on a minute. Like I'm 40 Creek Chris. Like, <laughs> yeah, I was born with this name. So I, am, I literally trolled the aftermarket um, and, uh, and found a guy uh, who agreed to sell me a bottle. Mm. And, um, and you know, it was, and I mean, I think the whiskey had been out for like literally like a month and it was already selling for, you know, a thousand, fifteen hundred dollars a bottle, which was, you know, crazy. Um, so I found a guy who was going to sell me one and I met him in the parking lot at our whiskey weekend. <laughs> and so we do our little transaction and uh, so I've got, you know, a bottle in, in, in a bag and I'm kind of a pound of weed with it too, or to hide my bottle. Cause I don't want anybody to see it. Yeah. And then I'm walking by and then there's a bunch of guys sitting at a picnic table and they're like, Hey, Chris, come on over here. Come on over. So I go, Hey guys, how you doing? We're shooting the breeze a little bit. And uh, they're like, you want to try some 22 year old rye? <laughs> yeah. So these guys actually went out and trolled the aftermarket as well and bought three bottles and paid anywhere between a thousand and fifteen hundred dollars a bottle, and they cracked them all open at Whiskey Weekend, and were pouring free samples for anyone who was walking around. That's amazing! Wow, like that, that's so cool. That's true blue Forty Creek fans right there. That's yeah. amazing. Hey, yeah. Um, to interrupt a little bit, we've we've been having tons of people commenting, and one of the questions just came up, which is uh, kind of interesting. It says, "How often do you reuse the Confederation oak barrels?" Mm. And how often do you replace them with new ones? Yep, great question. Um, actually, why don't we uh, why don't we pour a dram of Confederation Oak and we'll talk about it? Sure. <laughs> oh man, that double barrel was good. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's a double barrel. Double barrel is great whiskey. Oh, speaking of doing shots of double barrel, that's good. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, actually, that's a shot that went down really easy. Uh, so, people out there, this is the uh, Confederation Oak. This was on, you know, we did uh, a lot of our unboxings on the same day, which in a way is a good thing because you can compare and contrast pretty quickly. And this one actually struck me instantly as, as a, a favorite. So, yeah, that's, it's all personal taste, but I really liked it. It definitely yeah. has an instant oak influence, which is in the name. Yeah. This is, uh, this is like literally a Canadian whiskey classic. Um, so, uh, this starts off very similar to, um, to double barrel, uh, but the huge influence is that secondary aging, which is two years in these Canadian white oak barrels. So for a lot of our barrels, we use them, you know, five, six times. Um, and that's usually where we kind of max out. Uh, but the Confederation oak barrels, we typically only use three times. 
Um, so we find that right after that, the uh, hey, nice cheers from Grimsby. Woohoo! <laughs> um, so yeah, we find that the that the the flavors drop off a lot faster in those Canadian white oak barrels, and I just think it's because because it's a uh, it's a denser. I mean, Canadian white oak, American white oak, same species of tree. It's just basically geography. So these trees grow a lot slower. It becomes a much more dense style of wood. Uh, and um, the... Uh, uh, Sorry to distract you with that, but that's funny. Hey, read that. Yeah, that's awesome. So, so yeah, because wood's so dense, there's, uh, there's you know, kind of less of that tannic extraction out of the barrels. Uh, and they just they just don't last as long, so... Okay. This one to me is super cognac -y. This almost reminds me of like Canadian whiskey meets cognac. So I got to ask, do you find that with some of the other whiskeys in the lineup? Because I, I uh, there's, yeah. there's, at times I get like these, these brandy style notes to yep. the whiskey. And uh, yeah. you're saying cognac on here and that definitely like, it makes a lot of sense. I was going to say there is this like, um, it's kind of like tart, uh, tang, um, zesty, like that distilled wine kind of, yeah. vibe. but, but the Oak is the big thing in this. I think, you know, like when you first put your nose to this compared to the other ones, you're getting that. And I think I described it as like, sometimes there's that new Oak smell with a young whiskey. And I mean, I, I'm not even sure how old this is, but it doesn't come across as, zesty and youthful in every aspect like the oak yeah is well-rounded and the whiskey's well-rounded i gotta say though the the mouth feel on this one is like just so velvety mm. and nice and soft too like i get why people talk shit about that glycerine about or whatever <laughs> i get why people talk shit <laughs> about your viscosity because like it's it's very unmatched well and i th it's like universally i didn't speaking. even know that c brought that up tonight and when we filmed all of these outdoors, I kept yep. on saying like, there's one of the big components of 40 Creek is the mouth feel. Like it's a big portion of it. It's not thin, yep. it's not too thick. It's not overly syrupy. There's just this kind of, it, it hits every nook and cranny, you know? <laughs> yeah, it, get, it, it seals everything. Mm -hmm. It's like, it's a good, yeah. it's like a good sealing. <laughs> there's, a, there's a real, richness to the style and that's just been you know it's it's even even just in in uh, like that's very much the house style there's that little you know little sweet but not overtly sweet um you know kind of pretty on the nose but full flavored bold without being too punchy and there's that that mouth feel to every every expression of 40 creek that that's pretty consistent through everything we do and that's it, it is really cool that like some house styles as much as you want it to be a controlled environment, it's just the way that it is due to terroir or the yeah. wh whoever's making it. It's like the fingerprint the still, of the whiskey, the water, you know, the whatever. It's, it yeah. becomes the fingerprint, and yeah. and it's rare in my experience that the the mouth feel is a big portion. Yeah, of it, you know, is it like a house style is a mouth feel. Yeah, and I like that's you good. could have that's a good thing. I can see how you could easily have a like a. I think that's the kid's porta potty. His porta potty's making sound. Sorry, my porta potty's singing. <laughs> um, but I can see how you could have like a house style mouthfeel that was like really thin and like shitty. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But like that having like a really nice, thick, rich mouthfeel is like that seems kind of odd. Like it, it, it but is it, but it brings people back, I think. Sure. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah, and I you know, and I think that uh you know that 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 mouthfeel has become more important. I mean, a lot of the like the you know the Pike Creek expressions have that. Um, mm -hmm. uh, like some of the two brewers expressions have that. So there's I, I think there's more more and more whiskeys that are really kind of uh, you know embracing embracing that that kind of nice warm beautiful viscosity, and uh, it's it's it, I think it makes for a much more pleasant drinking experience uh and, and frankly i'm happy to see a lot of other a lot of other whiskeys kind of go in that direction it's funny though because like a lot of times you don't you don't really notice mouthfeel until you notice it like it's an afterthought until you feel it and then you're like for sure but I mean, I mean it's like it's like when you 
do you want soggy, limp dick fries or do you right. want the like fries crisp, yeah. that are crispy and nice? You know, it's the same kind it's of thing. A, it's, it's, it's a, a part big of part of the experience. Yeah, yeah for sure. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> All right. All right. Anyway, it feels real good. I like it. I'll be curious yeah. to see what your poll is saying right now. After we've had a little sip of Confederation Oak as well. Okay, let's see. Uh, well, we've got this comment. That's always good. Okay. We we like to hear that. Yeah, but we won't we won't highlight all the uh, hate mail. Yeah. <laughs> you suck. No hate mail. Come on. Oh no, it's rare. It's rare. It's rare. <laughs> it's rare, but you, it, but very violent when it comes in. Yeah. Yeah, we've had like terrorist threats or <laughs> stuff like that. But we was the one at the very bottom. There? Uh, oh. from Goton that you're on right oh. now that I can't see. Okay, I gotta. Here we go. I'm just gonna highlight it. I have 40 Creek Barrel Select oh. in my glass, last third of the bottle, nice butterscotch note, and yes, the mouthfeel is rounded. There you go. All fries, yeah. man. <laughs> yep. oh, um, should we maybe give away one bottle? Let's give right away now? a bottle Let's just to keep, bottle. keep you happy. Um, yeah. Yeah. Okay. We usually... And how, how are you doing, by the way? Are we good right. still? Like, We're what good, are you yeah. Oh, yeah. We're almost yeah. an hour, so... We haven't even drink Oplinko yet. Oh yeah! All right, let's give away a bottle and do some Drinko Plinko. Okay, yeah. let's do that. Uh, where and that? I just finished my uh, Confederation Oak, and it was delicious. So, is this widely available, by the way? That one's a little hard. Uh, it's it's generally available across Canada uh, and in a few parts of the U.S. Um, in BC, the private liquor stores have it, um, uh, but the BC liquor stores do not. Um, and then it's pretty much it's in it's in Alberta, Saskatchewan. It's pretty much available everywhere else across, uh, except for Quebec. Uh, it's not in Quebec oh. yet. Um, I'm going to say one rule for giving away the bottles is that one person cannot win both of them. So uh, yeah. if you win it, you're done. You're not getting the second one. So I'm just, I'm just saying that right now because we have had a couple of people that have been on real good lucky streaks lately, and uh, although it's great for them. We want to make sure that everybody gets a chance to experience. Uh, okay, so I've got the randomizer here. Is this the right one? Okay, so we're doing numbers. If you, Okay, if you are a patron, you have already received your numbers. You know your number, and they are between number one and number 302. Okay, so I have the randomizer here. And it, you can see it's been set to numbers between 1 and 302. I'm going to hit the randomize button. It's what, gonna... what bottle are we giving away? Which one do you want to give away? Let's give away the spiked honey. Okay, for spiked honey, the winner is, here comes a button, 235. Let's see who that is. Does anyone out there that's watching right now, you can tell us quicker than we can tell you probably, but 235 just won the spiked honey. That's Rylan Master. Ryland. Ryland, he lives in Vancouver. Ryland oh, asked, oh man, you're going to save us money on shipping. Thank you, <laughs> Ryland. That's amazing. Okay, so Ryland, you won the spiked honey. You're out. We'll give away another bottle in a bit after Drinko Plinko. Yeah, we'll, we'll do second one in a bit. Excellent. Okay, so, okay, so we, I've just crushed my Confederation Oak. Okay, me too. Let's nice. do one more dram and then we'll move on to Drinko Plinko. So what what do we do next? We're gonna we're gonna have you up until like three a.m. Just so you know. That's so good. I'm good with that. <laughs> it's the one thing before we, before we move on from Confederation Oak. Yeah. Uh, whis whiskey of the decade of the Canadian Whiskey Awards back in January. No big deal. No, no, <laughs> not a big deal at all. Um, That's amazing. Celebrating a decade of of excellence. Uh, that that whiskey's like the gold standard. That's, that's incredible. Uh, everybody like that one. Yeah, well, I mean, that was for me. That was the showstopper. I, I, I mean, we're gonna talk about uh, unity in a bit here, but that was still yeah. the one that kind of pushed it over the edge for me. Those two might need to go head to head in a battle. Yeah, you know, we might have we're to gonna see. we will eventually do a blind tasting of it all to really Fight. to make sure it's you know legit or whatever. Yeah, but anyway, from our own perspective. from our perspectives. Um. Okay, move your dirty glass glassware <laughs> out of here. Jump out any excess water drop. Okay, what are we what are we doing next here? Uh, let's do unity. 
All yes. Right. I love it. Yes. I was hoping you were going to say that. So we, oh, we yeah. were with unity on the tracks. We walked the tracks. Mm -hmm. um, we sat on the overpass on the uh, trestle. And uh, did you see any of these videos by any chance? Oh, yeah. You, can, no, it's fine. <laughs> you know what? There's actually, when you were just pouring it, there was a, an interesting rosé like pink color hue like a color to just it. a yeah. pink yeah. hue as you were pouring it like just from that angle i was sitting at and maybe that's just because it's messing with my head because i know what's in it but so this one <laughs> is the mocha stave yes um 10 year old corn whiskey age statement right there people layered additional uh, complexity in the blend a small amount of rare portuguese style starboard wine aged 15 years like so, this is just nuts so this is a 111 um you you've taken advantage of canada's 111 rule where you can add uh one eleventh of uh of the liquid can be another uh alcohol a spirit, of some kind. A spirit that's mm -hmm. aged uh, a minimum of uh, the spirit has to be made aged a minimum of three or four years itself right two years okay so, years, yeah. um, so very cool. Um, also got to mention 43%, which is, yeah. you know, there's like, we were talking about, you know, percentages and everything. It is a thing in the whiskey world right now where a lot of people want their whiskey a little bit higher proof. It just feels mm -hmm. like you're getting a little bit more of it. Like you're getting a bonus or something. Yeah. So here we are at 43%. You've got the 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 111 rule in place. Um, the nose on this one again, you can almost smell the viscosity, but you can smell 40 Creek too. But the the 40 Creek signature style is there, mm -hmm. and I mean yeah. right there as a base, that is you're 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 hitting above the marker. Anything after that, and after that, for me personally, I get like a a decent. Again, that kind of cognac wine, distilled wine kind of smell. Yeah, like this is a little more fruity. A little bit more fruity, yeah. a little bit more, just even like, I can't, I, I, sometimes you get lost for words trying to, trying to define something mm -hmm. and you just have dark, to experience it yourself. Yeah. That's dark where it's fruit, <laughs> dark fruit, prune, yeah, little raisins. Mm. Really, really nice. And you guys and know the, so, do you guys know the story behind this one? No, uh, little bits. Like the little unity, bit? whole idea that you got uh, basically fans to come up with. Right. Yeah. And, and actually, there, we put all their names on the back of the box. Um, we literally brought in fans from across the country to the distillery, and uh, gave them a bunch of cool liquid to kind of goof around with, and. Uh, uh, at the end of the day, uh, I mean, Bill Ashburn, our master blender, made uh, three blends uh, using, you know, similar components. So we tasted a bunch of the individual components and tasted some of the, the different blends. Uh, and ultimately, they ended up making something that was kind of in between uh, two blends that, uh, that Bill had done up. And I mean, so ultimately, that, that whiskey was uh, made for the fans by the fans. Which was awesome. And that's so cool because it's for the fans, by the fans, but for the distillery, by the fans. Yeah. <laughs> right? Like it's it's for the fans. That's amazing yeah. because that that right there is a uh, it builds community in your product and in yeah. what what a buy in, yeah. It doesn't sure. it's a know, grass it's a grassroots, you know, like it's it's from from the ground up. Like not all the best ideas are top down. They're they're yeah. brought from the from the ground and through. that's rare in a like you know you know there's been corporate a, business style there are a few a few groups that have done that too like you the one one other one that i can think of is um buffalo trace cypb which was craft your perfect bourbon i think which was i think that was done online though with like yeah. hundreds or I mean, thousands of people the, but this is unique in its own there's different versions i mean even like with lafroig where you can you know buy your square meter of peated land like <laughs> yeah, little, my thing, little things like that are really cool but this gives really i think in my mind whiskeys and distilleries are trying to plan for the future as much as possible mm -hmm. um so especially if you're releasing a whiskey that's 10 years old or whatever you got to think 10 years down the road so you're actually giving the power to the people 
that are consuming the, that product and what they want at that time, which is really interesting. Yeah. yeah. It's, anyway, it's, it's tough because we like, you know, like what, what do like right now people, okay, here's a funny, um, here's a funny like scenario though, is that, so you're trying to, you're trying to figure out what people are going to want to drink, but in 1985, where's that stupid bottle that we have? Oh, it's in that box there. In 1985, there was the diet craze, and everyone's looking for lighter this and lighter that. Yeah. And the light whiskey. whiskey. We That's got awesome. this stupid bottle right here that says, mm -hmm. great taste, 33% less alcohol. It's 27% rye, right? And then yeah. now you've got people that want cast strength. Okay, everything you wanted at 65%. It's like, well, how did... How do you predict what the craze is going to be? Is it going to be diet whiskey or is it going to be like 80% off the still, like the hottest shit you can get? <laughs> I mean, who knows? I mean, I mean, like I know our guys like John Hall and Bill Ashburn just make whiskey that they would like to drink at home. Uh, that's it. So, you know, I, I don't want to say that uh, they don't really care what anybody else thinks, but I really don't think they care what anybody else thinks. <laughs> and you know what? That's cool because, you know, we're we're a couple of guys that would tell you, no matter what happens, you're safe at 45%. You know, anywhere around yeah, yeah. 45%, you're, you're safe, right? Yeah. So, like, you guys are coming in at 43 on a lot of these ones. Everybody's doing 40 as a base. That makes sense. But then 43 as your kind of, like, specialty – that's really safe because you're getting a little bit more, but it's not too hot. Like, I mean, I think you mentioned that earlier, like an hour ago, right? It's like, it's, it's not going to blow you away. So it's safe, right? Yeah. It's, um, it's not even that it's safe. It's that it's like, uh, it transcends generations. <laughs> like, sure. like, sure. Okay. Maybe that was wow. the, a bit, We're too, a, a little bit too cosmic there, but <laughs> Have you ever thought about that trees are consuming us? <laughs> oh my God. Okay, we got to move on before we get too deep here. This thing was going in a very different direction. It wasn't like bear starting yeah, fires. And what stuff, if so. bears could start fires? Are we in trouble? <laughs> Think about it. Just No, you don't have to answer that right now. Um, okay. It's really the one thing that di differentiates them from us. It's what keeps Anyways. me up at night. Anyways. Okay, sorry. Um, all right. Fuck. Okay, we better do Drinko Plinko here. Oh, man, this is, no, this is, this this is pro possibly the worst live stream ever, aside from all the content you're providing, Chris. <laughs> I'm so um, happy to be part of it. <laughs> yes. But um, you know what? It is super fun to do these live streams, especially with people. The whiskey community is really, really supportive, and I'm sure yeah. you've noticed, like, <laughs> People, that's why we still exist. Well, 100%. I mean, all these people that are commenting right now and watching the show, they are here every show. A lot I mean, of it, Really, like, it doesn't matter if it's spur of the moment. It doesn't matter if it's planned in advance. It's a community, and it's really, 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 really nice. So I think in Canada especially, that's why we're trying to promote the Canadian whiskey. Here we go. Oh, the Drinko Plinko machine has come out. Nice. Movie, that is uh, a giant Drinko Plinko. It's a giant Drinko Plinko. Oh, we're not messing around. My yeah, Plinko you, is like a quarter of the size of that. Um, we got to line the bottles up. Maybe yeah. Okay, let's see if they'll sit in the actual compartments or we may have to put them on the ground. Oh, or or just, yeah, it's just it's still <laughs> on the edge a little. Oh, there. Yeah, that'll work. Okay, throw well, them We up. need six, so Slap let's them up uh, here. go with some. Put the good stuff up there. We we'll yeah, got a yeah, unity yeah, in there as well. Yeah. We'll get a copper pot. Yeah, great, right? Everything. Um, double barrel. This is, might fall over. Sure. Should uh, we just have a confederation oak up here? And, and we haven't even that. talked about. Uh, We've almost run out of time for the forager. We haven't even but, talked about the forager, but we're gonna throw it in there. Let's do that. It's an in interesting one. Okay, so. Oh my God. So basically, people, the way that this works, if you haven't seen Drinko Plinko, oh God, we're going to spill something. Yeah, we're going to break something. Break that. It's, it's all good TV, you know? Yeah. Whatever um, you call that. So basically, we get the the brand new Trini and C challenge coin that you can get on a... <laughs> oh, did we mention that? <laughs> anyway, whatever. I'm going to put this one in upside down because it'll probably... Okay, there you go. There we go. 
Okay, so round yeah. one is we choose the wicks, or you will choose your whiskey, and then, then well, I'll choose I don't. Mine. This coin chooses. Oh, yeah. Sorry, you're right. <laughs> I'm going to get us some Plinko glasses. will choose the whiskey. Yeah. So, again, we drop this guy down. It bounces in between the things. Boom, 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 boom. And wherever it lands, that's the whiskey we pour. And uh, then we move on. Once each of us have our whiskey of, you know, the coin's choice, then we move on to our uh, mixer. Same kind of idea. We line them up. And then beyond that, we do a garnish round. So I'm sorry, Chris, that you can't get to taste these amazing concoctions, but that's okay. I'll make it at home later. Yeah, I mean, you know what? Sometimes the I think the reason we started with this was to stumble upon the perfect cocktail. We are looking for the perfect which cocktail. Which I don't know if we've ever stumbled upon. No, we have but, never done it. But then again, we usually mix like, Milk oysters and, like oysters and milk and random crap. So, okay, okay, you go first. So this might be a little bit more legitimate. Okay, pick your. I'm whiskey. gonna go first. Here we go. Honey. Oh, oh, you got unity. I got unity. Oh, yeah. Wow. So wow. I'm gonna take this off. This becomes my whiskey. I well, think... I guess you can choose. No, it you gotta leave it in there because yeah. we need six. Okay, here, I'll do my turn. Okay. Okay, my whiskey will be. I'm gonna start on this end and see. Oh, I'm Confederation Oak. Wow. Ooh, great nice. Good jams. The mix there. round or the, okay. the whiskey round is looking great. Okay. So we got the Union game. Put this away right here. Yeah. Okay, now the mix round. So usually we highly edit these videos when we do this. <laughs> it, it does take a minute. minute. It takes a couple minutes to set things up. But uh, here the, you go. Is that we got, small? We got uh, the Schweppes oh, God, Club that's Soda that's Mini that's right that's here. That's We've got regular Coca-Cola. We've got 7-Up. We also have the Gold Dior co-op version ale. of ginger ale. We just mean ginger ale. Root beer. We've got root beer. And iced tea. And iced tea. So this is going to be the mix. The mix deciding by the, the coin of mystery. Do, do, do I have the coin? Did you... Is it? Did we the leave the coin? coin? Where? Oh, there it is. It's still in there. I'll go first this round since okay, I'm going standing back. up. Here we go. Sure. Okay, Confederation Oak and here we go. Oh, oh iced tea. Ice oh, tea. that could work. It's Confederation Oak iced tea. And we're gonna replace the iced tea with a coffee drink. Oh, so you could do uh, Unity and coffee or something. Okay, like I was hoping like you know. if I did the coffee yeah. drink, a copper pot for some reason. Seems like that would go okay. okay here we go. Here we go. Oh, I got ginger ale. Ginger That's ale. a pretty big bet. That's, it's like a, yeah. a rye and ginger at this point. There you go. Okay. You know what I'm realizing? We oh. never really were quite prepared enough for the Oh, <laughs> we forgot to get the garnish, so this might take a little longer than we anticipated. But that's okay. I'm sure I can think of something to say. Um, at this point, I, I don't know. Have you ever seen... Or people out there, if you've seen the uh, the Drinko Plinko machine at work before, but we've definitely come up with some interesting cocktails, I would say. Um, so you've got those two. I can't wait to see so, what these so are. Here's, the, here's some some fresh from the garden rosemary that could be a oh a that could be good. Some mint. We also have a, a sprig of mint. A couple a sprig of mint. We got oh, the Hershey's good. chocolate syrup. Yeah. Uh, we also have. The compliments version of maraschino cherries. And then uh, C is gone to go get more. We just need two more. So thankfully we, we were so prepared for this, eh? <laughs> um, let's see what we got here. Let's grab a branch off. The <laughs> Frantically trying to find some things here. Oh, look at the maple syrup. Maple syrup. That and, been... um, uh, oh, Bomato Caesar Rim. That's Ooh, Caesar that's Rim. That could be tough. Okay. okay. So right now, what do you got here? So, so far, this is, oh, my God. Oh, dear boy. Unity. Oh, my God. <laughs> I'm going to tell you something. These bottles are very sturdy. Very I just strong. dropped them twice. So uh, the Unity and... Ginger ale, so that kind of a Ryan ginger style. It's very nice. Okay. What do you got, see? And right now I'm working with Confederation Oak and Iced Tea. So here we go. All right. Okay, here we go Mix them up. I'm going to go for my uh, 
Topper. Oh. Maraschino cherry. Oh, is it? I think. Oh, yeah. Is it? Yeah. Okay. It's a cherry. That's, That's good. One. It's good. Okay. Leave it there because I might I might get it as well. Okay. Maraschino cherry. That's gonna be nice. Oh, 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 oh. Also uh, maraschino oh, cherry. Another maraschino yeah. cherry. It, it did hit the chocolate syrup first, but it landed on maraschino cherry. I, I'm going with maraschino oh, cherry. Okay, I think okay, it's going to okay. taste better. Okay, it's going to so, taste better, yeah. but is it as entertaining? <laughs> That's not my problem. <laughs> no and sprigs you, of rosemary. You can up. rosemary. I might just put the and rosemary in it. It might be good. <clears throat> okay, let's make some cocktails. Okay, Chris. Um... Do you have a preferred cocktail that you make out of your uh, any of the Forty Creek lineup? Um, so that's my answer. Yeah, I've got a few. Um, I am a huge uh, Boulevardier guy, so Copper Pot Boulevardiers are kind of my thing. Mm -hmm. um, if I do a cocktail. Uh, Forger and tonics. Uh, we're gonna get into the forger after you guys finish making those messes there. Uh, we have tonic. Sorry, we have tonic. Time. Perfect. Oh, this is actually. You know, usually when Drinko Plinko comes out, things get disgusting. So um, this is a lot <laughs> more pleasant than what we're used to. Normally, I think Trenny said it before. We're talking about like oysters or like tuna fish mixed with whiskey and like milk or like yogurt or something disgusting. Uh, yep. So here, I just throw, I put two maraschino cherries in there. Yeah, I think and that's fair. I can do Like that. at this point, I would say this is the closest we've come to discovering the perfect cocktail. Yeah, without even tasting it. Yeah. What about a little, just a splooge, just a splooge of, splooge of, of juice. cherry juice? Yeah. Well, that's not oh, a yeah. sticky. That's gonna be, it's going to be a sticky right Okay, round. so what do you have there? So again, for the people who are just tuning in, and there's a lot of you, is uh, <laughs> there's a lot of people tuning out. I should say as well. <laughs> Sorry, I mean, tuning out. <laughs> um, what I have here is basically the Forty Creek Unity, which is excellent whiskey in its own right, mm -hmm. um, mixed ale. with ginger ale and a couple maraschino cherries. So that's gonna be a good cocktail, I think. All right. Just, All right. Why don't we tell the people? Okay, and I've got Confederation Oak iced tea and maraschino cherry so wow. uh, let's get into these this. are gonna be good okay here we go here we go that's like a hundred percent a reasonable cocktail mine's like super good yeah mine's pretty damn good too actually <laughs> mine's actually like really good like iced tea actually works iced tea works really well iced tea works on a 33 year old or 33 degrees night it does. It's yeah. like refreshing, but it's also like you know, like this iced tea is like not carbonated at all. So yeah, it's like yeah. It's all, so you got a flat. It's drink. very flat and soft, but with the ice cubes in it, and then like the sweetness. Oh, it's really nice. Actually, I got. I, I like the bit of uh, like sizzle and burn on the little the ginger sparkle. Ale. Yeah, a little sparkle good. to it. It like the sparkle always works. Like that's why it works so well with rye, right? Because it's like yeah. spice on spice. Yeah. Um, I think we now have to crush them. Oh yeah. So uh, this is a this might be <laughs> this might be the most successful drinko plinko we've ever done. Oh, easily. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's very good. I um, I actually would recommend mixing an iced tea with uh, a Forty Creek. I yeah. mean, I there don't you know. Iced tea isn't necessarily a normal like mixing uh, beverage, but it seems to work. So just saying. I mean, ginger ale is well known. I don't know that iced tea is really. And honestly, just for a little addition, I'm gonna put a little bit of rosemary in there. You crush little it up. Sprig of rosemary. Sprig of rosemary Smell your would fingers. be nice. Smell oh, your yeah. fingers. It's delicious. Honestly, it's save still some works. for the I really forager. Like yeah. Save some for the forager. Okay, three, two, one. <laughs> well, that's good. Sorry that you're experiencing that. Experiencing us abuse alcohol, but <laughs> no, I am uh, no, I, I would expect nothing less. I'm getting the full trendy and see experience tonight. I like it. You know, <laughs> you know the channel. You know your gut. You know what you're getting into. <laughs> okay. Luckily, luckily, some people don't. <laughs> oh, yeah. Some, some people get shocked. When I they gotta come quickly on. just rinse this up. There's a bunch of cherry juice. It's not gonna be good. We've we've made a mess here. Um, I'm gonna. 
I'm going to skip doing any more cocktail innovation with like all these hotshot bartenders I get to work with. I'm just going to do Drinko Plinko from now on. Yeah, you can borrow the machine. We'll, we'll ship it to you. Perfect. Just loan it to me for you know, a couple of days. I'll be good. Yeah, you know what? If you took it to the next, um, um, next time we have um, Victoria Whiskey Fest, you can bring. There we go. We'll, we'll bring the Drinko Plinko machine for you. And Perfect. people can people can make their own cocktails all night long. That would be actually be pretty funny. I'm going to do a seminar at the Victoria Whiskey Festival with just Drinko Plinko. <laughs> yeah, you know, it might not sell out, but that's okay, right? <laughs> I don't know. I'd, I'd be that one. Well, yeah, and maybe maybe that should be the seminar that we're hosting, but... um. <laughs> uh, I don't know if, if uh, we probably would have to have some kind of, uh, you know, serving it right or something I like have that. It. And I have it. Oh, you've yeah. got it. Yeah. Oh, man. I'm, you I mean, know what? I just went in there realizing I don't live here and I couldn't find anything to wipe the stable with. <laughs> but I did find a piece of napkin. Perfect. Oh, I'll get it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. Maybe we can talk to Davin and we can say, hey, uh, we'd like to do a Drinko Plinko seminar and uh, feed cocktails yeah. to everyone else. Of tuna fish and milk. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're, we're gonna get some uh, Forty Creek twenty-two year old rye and mix it with uh, <laughs> milk and tuna fish for people, and they're gonna pay us for it. Anyway, there you go. Uh, okay, moving on. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> he, he, we're rambling at this point. Well, we're having good. What are we gonna have? Any more with you to try? Someone is. We don't that have George. Else has. Look, you know what's funny? You look at our comments here and. They're on their own thing. Yeah, they have there's their a whole, own. There's a whole other show going on right there. Oh, yeah. Like sometimes yeah. reading the comments, you realize how much more entertaining they are than we are. Oh, they're way better than <laughs> us. They're way funnier than we are. That's yeah. Um, they're talking about freaking Boona Habin in the con like. Yeah. Okay. But it was funny, though. Like earlier on, there was a message that was like, I love Canadian whiskey. This is so great. I love the whole Canadian club lineup. I'm like, you're on the wrong. Like, you're not even paying attention. Um. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> all good. Okay, let's move on. What yes. would you like us to try next here? Let's do let's do the forager because you're one of the few places in in Canada that can actually uh, get uh, get the forager. Do okay. you have a clean glass, or do you want me to rinse your glasses for you? Well, I have, I have three, three glasses rinse. here that I believe are all soiled. I think these are all soiled and disgusting <laughs> at this point. Well, the forager. Should I, we make the forager and tonic? Because we we li I I have we do have tonic. I have tonic that I'm actually literally trying oh, to soda. get rid. Of. I'm soda. actively trying to get rid of the tonic. No soda or tonic. So, yeah. Would you say tonic? Try a little bit on its own and then add a splash of tonic. Really? Yes. We also okay. have rosemary and and, and uh, we also have mint. herbs. Yeah. We we did this some foraging of our own actually. <laughs> nice. So uh, that rosemary. Since C is gonna be he can probably hear us um he's rinsing glasses why don't you tell us a little bit about the forager this is not specifically 40 creek correct correct um so we kind of wanted the forager to have its own identity um it's i mean it's made by the folks at 40 creek uh, uh it's made by our it's the brainchild of uh, our master blender bill ashburn it is a three-year-old barrel-aged whiskey um, and infused with uh, natural hand-harvested botanicals. So okay. weird things like, you know, spruce tips and mugwort and uh, um, Labrador tea. And uh, uh, so there's all of these, uh, all of these really... You guys are basically kind of creating a witch's brew. Yeah, a little bit. Uh, so what I think about it is it kind of bridges the gap between whiskey and gin. Um, That's it, well, got, I'm glad you said that and not us first. Yeah. <laughs> Bridging the gap between whiskey and gin. Uh, it, it, yeah, yeah, it's true. Right? It's true. Yeah. Okay, go ahead. Sorry. <laughs> no, no, not at all. Um, so, and, and it's funny. So this has gone through a bunch of different iterations and, and I had the opportunity to taste a bunch of them. Uh, in the lab with Bill as this product was kind of being developed. And the first time that I tried it, uh, it was completely, I didn't even really think it was, uh, I didn't even really think it was whiskey. Um, yeah. 
So Bill had really kind of done a heavy juniper infusion on the whiskey to the point where it, it barely tasted like whiskey. It was super, super ginny. Um, I like that he dialed back uh, some of the botanical infusions. So it's still, still definitely whiskey, but done in a lighter style that introduces some of those hints of the different botanicals. So, you know, little bits of the juniper for sure show up. Uh, and then there's some of these other kind of musky, citrusy, uh, uh, you know, piney type of notes uh, that come from a lot of the other botanicals that are in there. It's uh, it's pretty cool. We're making lots of new friends with it. You know, I, it's it's the place that it has to go. I think. Like, I think it's a good experiment, and people will take it to heart and realize that you can do a lot more with whiskey and aging in a barrel and then actually having different infusions yeah I, this I really, really, really like the boundaries again um uh this it's is experimental and again canadian really became experimental which is something that hadn't happened in probably you know 10 15 years ago yeah yeah so to me it does well, the Available in Manitoba. Uh, I'm not sure yet. So the only places you can buy it at the moment uh, are BC, Alberta, and Ontario. Uh, I think Nova Scotia is going to get a little bit uh, towards the end of the year. I'm not sure where we're at with Manitoba yet. Sorry. Fair enough, though. Um, yeah. It does have like it has like a corn forward kind of uh, flavor to it. And then you have the botanicals and then it has like a youthful, like a youthful zest or zing to it. That those are the kind of like the three properties that come out to me. Yeah. I would say that's true. Is, is there yeah. a reason um, behind not putting the 40 Creek name on it? Oh, that's interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, part of the thought process uh, behind it was, is we didn't want it to, um, we wanted people to kind of look at it as its own thing. So as soon as you associate the 40 Creek game with it, people have a particular flavor profile in mind. They have, you know, they have expectations about yeah. what it's going to be or what it's supposed to be. So we wanted right. to get rid yeah. of that. Um, and then also it kind of opens up the, you know, it opens up that we can do a lot with it. Uh, so as soon as you're married to kind of the 40 Creek name, uh, and don't get me wrong. I mean, Forty Creek's been exceptionally innovative over the years. Um, but you know, with the Forager, we could get into, we could do a, a, you know, a vodka strain. We could do a gin strain. We can do so. It could be all kinds of different things because it's not attached to the Forty Creek name. That's great. But you could do the training C strain. <laughs> yeah. There we go. Yeah. Like, it's it smells like sweat. <laughs> Ah, <laughs> oh, this is crappy. <laughs> oh, this is terrible. Oh, it's the, well, it's the training. Well, it's the training C brand. Uh, what's Forty Creek Chris's favorite of the lineup? Everybody always wants to know that, right? Like, what's your copper pot? I, I mean, it's it's such a, a such classic signature. I mean, it's hard it's hard not to um think copper pot when you think 40 creek i mean it's uh well, and i mean and just from a like a a buyer's perspective you know you go in there and it's you hard get, to be you get three percent extra yeah it's basically oh. the same price almost yeah, yeah. and yeah it, there's More. something yeah. specifically unique about it which i like but it has all of the signatures and it has the yeah it's just it's just so good um so sorry um while c was in there you were talking about the botanicals in this and they're locally foraged from the area of where the distillery is. Uh, actually, they come from uh, they come from some different parts of uh, of the country, which is exciting as well. So, okay. um, the sweet fern comes from uh, kind of the northeast edge uh, of Algonquin Park. Um, the spruce tips are harvested from uh, Nova Scotia. Uh, the Labrador tea, uh, you would think would be coming from Labrador, but it doesn't. It actually comes from Quebec. Um, the, uh, the juniper berry and the mugwort are, are both harvested, uh, in Northern Ontario. Cool. I love mugwort. <laughs> yeah. Mugwort. Bring the rain, man. Love it. Anything with mugwort. Good. 
Um, so uh, the the actual recipe is right on the back. It says the Forager and Tonic, one ounce of Forager Botanical Whiskey, three ounces of Tonic. Serve in a tall glass. I'll get us a tall glass. Over ice, garnish with a slice of lemon. I don't know that I have lemon here because my wife took everything camping with her. Uh, but I might have like a little bit of that lemon, like the little the little lemon circle Ooh. thing with the juice in it. Yeah, but I could just a little of that. A sploosh, a sploosh of uh, lemon. A sploosh even. A sploosh of lemon. Okay, go, go, get some tall glasses and uh, ice. And I will tell you right now, this is proof that we are never prepared. <laughs> <laughs> All right. You know what? Your show is very much like most of my master classes. That's perfect. <laughs> well, I'm glad we, we should do a master class together because like, okay, what are you doing? I don't know. What are you doing? Nah, I'm not sure. Yeah. Let's just roll but with it. But it's going to be awesome. Yeah. <laughs> At the Here's very least, it'll be fun. From, uh, John Harden, do pl private liquor stores in Canada mm -hmm. charge? Oh, this has really not too much to do with whiskey, uh, like this. But in British Columbia, where we are from, uh, it is one of the highest taxed markets in the country for, for whiskey. Oh, God. We're getting into tax. No, I, well, I just uh, heard that. <laughs> That's okay. a whole other show. Okay, here we go. Uh, one ounce. This is, this is exactly one ounce of whiskey right yeah, there. There. There we go. And that's also exactly one ounce of whiskey. Well, you got to do your one, your two finger measure. That's like an ounce. Okay. And Pour then up. we've got the mini can of tonic here, which we'll share. A couple of fellas in their tonic. <laughs> I got to show you guys something that just made, from a whiskey uh, perspective, this just kind of made me giggle a bit. So this is called real lemon, right? You've You've all seen this. But did you know it also is natural strength oh that's good that you guys should work with that you should that should be on your natural label strength. natural yeah, I like strength that. yeah i'm good uh, with that. this is cast strength what lemon yeah here give me the cast last strength. the cask uh, is plastic, but that's okay yeah okay. aging lemons that would be yeah. interesting. oak aged lemons okay so we have we've got the the forager so this is the forager people who have not seen it out there and this is the forager yeah, yeah, for all you lucky folks in BC, uh, you're one of the you know you're one of the three provinces in Canada that get it. So hope you enjoy it. Here we go. I can already tell you, oh, it's super good. Nothing wrong with that. Uh, super good. You know because because you don't need the gin. It like because it has the juniper and that kind of lighter spirit style. Yeah. But, and the citronella, like but, I shouldn't say citronella, maybe, but. Um, like that citric acid yeah. <laughs> but the um the tonic gives it some extra sweetness too right and, I like it, that. and it has a it's good like the tart like every that's and the really natural nice. strength of lemon is really nice it's like um yeah it's a uh it's totally reminds me of like gin and tonic but a different like yeah a, a different, different dimension version of it yeah yeah, I make uh, I, I I make uh, forager and tonics uh, for for guests when they come over to the house and they don't even know they're drinking whiskey. No, uh, yeah. it's, it's actually, actually super good. It's actually no, a pretty way to turn people on to whiskey. Yeah, super. it's a yeah. great little it's a great little gateway whiskey for sure. For sure, um, super good with uh, with the tonic. Um, let's give away another bottle. I think we're gonna we're gonna give away our final bottle here. We've we've kept Chris up pretty late tonight but um i think now is the time while we're sipping on this delicious cocktail that we're gonna give away okay. this guy right here this is literally the cream of the crop the cream liqueur uh 40 creek in the style that people that don't know it's like a bailey's kind of thing that you pour in your coffee or is that better you could probably crush this in your face pretty easily too okay oh you could just yeah, you could have it over ice or over ice cream or something Ooh, like that. Be so good. Yeah. Okay, so mm -hmm. and just drink we it like previously, that. the last winner was number 235. That was Rylan. So we do have to say, Rylan, you cannot win another bottle. So here we go. We have numbers between 1 and 302. Those are our patrons. So here we go. Winner is 247. Oh, no, that's in the neighborhood of Rylan. Let's see. Isn't that just Rylan? That could be Rylan. 
No, 247 is Speed Rack. Speed Rack. Speed rack. <laughs> 247 speed rack that's another new winner nice speed, that's awesome i don't think speed rack has won anything before so it's or commented ever <laughs> no, <laughs> no, no 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 come on speed rack has been around a while okay. um and rylan has rylan is a um a dram club member and he hasn't won anything before i don't think nice like, beyond like a coaster or something super shitty from us but um <laughs> so he's gonna get a bottle and speed rack's gonna get a bottle what a great Let's night. be honest here, guys. We're all winners tonight. Oh, huge, oh, huge winners. Yeah. Yeah. Some more than others, but yeah. <laughs> uh, um, this has been a lot of fun. Um, we had a great time, and we really appreciate you coming on the show. And, uh, you know, uh, I know you still have some T-shirts that you've sent us, which is amazing. They're yeah. coming. Yep. And so Chris at Forty Creek has been unbelievably generous to us with generous. eight bottles. Yeah. A couple of those we gave away. I mean, this has been so much fun. Hopefully we can, you know, if COVID settles down and the whiskey festivals start again and all that, we'll get a chance to actually meet up and do some one-on-one -on -one drink -o -o. legitimate <laughs> interviews and drink open. <laughs> you mean this wasn't uh, legitimate? Come on, what are you talking about? <laughs> Slightly <laughs> illegitimate. One-on-one, -on -one, yeah. like where we're together. It was all rigged tonight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> The results were rigged, but yeah, no, it, it was great and we appreciate it. And we had a lot of fun and there was a lot of people watching tonight and uh, some really great questions. And we appreciate all the, the viewers um, for our YouTube and for Instagram and Twitter and whatever other garbage content we're putting out there that, that people are willing to look at. So um, it's great. So we're going to sign off. Chris, you stick around for a minute and we'll just, uh, we'll just wrap things up. But yeah, um, awesome. Um, everybody that's out there right now, Trenny and I are probably going to like cook some dinner and then we may come back, uh, for a post game show, um, that will just be a complete mess of garbage. Something so, will erase in the morning. Yeah. yeah. We'll totally be erased the next day. This, this one will be around, but okay. Thanks so much. And, uh, uh, we'll see you in a second here, Chris. All right. Thanks, thank you. Guys. Guys.